Hi. How are you doing? Oh, Good, how are you? so cute. Can I please do a medium eye black tea? Medium ice black tea. With, with three pumps of the uh, vanilla syrup. Being blinded. Look at these cool sunglasses I got for $6 at the thrift store. Like, who am I? Who am I? I got these ones for $6. And I picked up these ones for $6. We're rocking now. Oh my gosh, which ones do you guys like more? These ones or these ones? Whoa, let me know. Thank you. What kind of tea was this? Black? Oh, that looks like green tea. It does, doesn't it? Thank you so much, I'm sorry about that. Thank you, have a good one. All right, thank the heavens the mic is working. We are laying, we are, we are, what we're doing? Damn it, woman, pull yourself together. As we're getting relaxed, I'm taking my shoes off. We are currently at Papago Park with a beautiful sunset. I would show you, but unscrewing this camera and screwing it back onto the tripod that it's on is too much work, so I'm so sorry. But we are getting comfortable. I posted on my Instagram story a little over a month ago for questions that you guys want me to answer. So I'm gonna be answering those questions today, right now. So grab snacks. I wish I would have gotten snacks for myself because I'm actually starving. I had some potatoes five hours ago. I was gonna go to the convenience store and pick up some snacks but I didn't have time the sunset's going down it's just ugh. it took a while to even get here we also just got back from the park oh my gosh I'm so sorry Daisy Here's some water Daisy ran his heart out okay that is enough for now gonna be an interesting q a it's not like a normal q a that you guys have seen before this is based pretty much on being homeless from all the questions that I went through we're gonna try to answer as many as possible all the questions it's like there's just there's a lot so let's get into it first question is do you like your car is five percent tint hard to see out of i do love my car a five percent tint is definitely hard to see out of at night and in like dark spaces like parking garages going through tunnels but overall like i love it i love the fact that nobody can see me and i love the fact that i can't really see anybody else you ever have dreams that you are still homeless or in your car <sighs> I don't have dreams of me sleeping in my car, but I do have dreams that are still like based around being homeless and dealing with a lot of the things that I had to deal with and go through at the time. So yes, yes I do. Do you ever get scared of being alone? Uh, not really, no. How are you feeling about the new year ahead? Every year is a new beginning to something. As much as I'm excited for it, I'm also nervous for it just because I don't know what it has in store as none of us never know what the upcoming years have in store for us. But overall, like I'm super excited. I know that there's always new opportunities coming and I have a lot of new opportunities already for me right now and I'm just super excited. It's a good sense of anxiousness or like nervousness. It's a good feeling, not a bad feeling. I'm, I'm super stoked about the upcoming year. Do you have any close family? This has been a question that everybody's been wanting to know. I've never spoke about it, mostly just because the relationship with my mom. So I have a mom and I have a brother and the relationship with my mom has been very rocky um, ever since I can remember. Just a lot of things happen as a lot of things happen within people's families and whatnot. I don't talk to my brother much, if I'm being completely honest with you. I maybe talk to him like once every two to three months, which is really sad. We don't have like any beef or anything. It's just, I feel like a, we don't really have a lot in common. Like I love my brother and I love my mom, but like with my brother, yeah, we just don't really talk. My mom, it's just really hard. Like I don't like talking about it because it's just hard to talk about. Suck it up. Um. So I just choose to not talk about it. I feel like I deserve that sense of privacy. It's just been very hard, but I do have a mom and a brother and the rest is history. <laughs> okay, let's let these tears subside. Here they go. Gosh, it's only like, what? Probably two minutes into this video and I'm already crying. Would you rather restart your life with all the knowledge you have now or be given 10K a day? I'd rather be given 10K a day. <laughs> How's your mental health doing? It's very up and down and all over the place. I think a lot of my um, like healing process is just accepting that what has happened has happened and it all happened for a reason. It's just hard to balance my mental state of mind right after being homeless. And anybody that has been homeless and has been like recently housed or has been homeless and was housed eventually, like th they will tell you that it's super hard. And I didn't think it was gonna be hard. Being away from Oregon and being away from everybody that I know has just just been so refreshing it was one of the best decisions i've ever made for dace and i overall like i have nothing to complain about my mental health is fine you're not believable as a person i'm just like everyone else i have good days and bad days hmm. are we gonna have to move okay i'm trying to like stay out of the sun but also have good lighting at the same time this is hard how did you afford your apartment homeless also i'm in mason i love to meet you're very sweet mason is not that very far so i worked 
in urgent care. I was the receptionist for a while and then I ended up quote unquote working my way up to be an uncertified medical assistant because of some things that went down in the clinic. The clinic was, it was definitely something else. So once my manager found out that uh, Dace and I were like living in our car and stuff, she like gave me the sheet of things that I can do and work on in order to work my way up and get a higher pay. So I ended up, you know, starting at a very low rate in pay. And then I worked my way up three to $4. Then I picked up extra shifts and I would work at different clinics. And so I ended up making a lot of my money just working my normal corporate job. I worked three 12 hour shifts Sometimes I would work a fourth day. 12 hour days are pretty long, but I would I would make it work. I mean, we had nowhere to go. And so working at the clinic was very like, very welcoming. And, and then I started TikTok. I would go live and a lot of people would send gifts on my lives. And so I made some money there. A lot of people donated for Jason and I, and a lot of it was to just stay in hotels or like put into our savings or keep savings for an apartment. Anytime people would send us money, they would send us money with the emoji of like what it's being sent for. And a lot of it was for an apartment or like pup cups or like Starbucks. People were just super duper sweet. I don't like the sun. I should move up. I should move up or I should move over. I'm sorry, hold on. Okay, I'm currently editing this and I'm like watching it back and I still didn't finish what I was saying about this uh, because as you'll see in the next clip that the next video that I had filmed, it was, it was gone. But yeah, so I made my money working at urgent care. I made my money on my TikTok lives after I figured out how to use lives. People donated, they donated for food, for hotels, they donated for savings. They donated just because everybody was so sweet and so generous and kind and humble and overall so graciously giving that we were able to save money to not only to just get an apartment, but to also like move far away from Oregon, which is exactly what Dace and I needed. We just needed to get out of there. I didn't tell people to send me money. I never asked for money. And if you're a follower of mine, you're going to know that. Not just a follower that's stalking me, but a follower that is genuine and cares about our well-being and enjoys watching our journey. You'll know that we never asked for money. A lot of people were thinking that I was making some of my money for photography and stuff, but truth be told is all the weddings, I don't even know how many weddings I did last year during being homeless maybe it was like two or three I don't remember those were those had already been booked years before and so I had already been paid I had already used that money uh, for bills and other necessities so I wasn't making any money with my photo business I did have like a few bookings one was like a, um, a mother and son and another one was um, a proposal oh Paige and uh, Mitch at the very end uh, but that was just a traded service for my hair in case you guys didn't know that's how I always kept up with my hair is because I had a friend do it for me a lot of people were thinking oh my gosh she's making thousands of dollars she's not even homeless like shut up anyways yeah i wasn't making any money with photo during the time of us being homeless so check yourself or get wrecked let's carry on to the rest of the video i'm so butthurt right now because i just filmed for like 25 minutes and my camera decided to shut off it literally just shut off like it literally just shut off it literally just shut off it literally just shut off for no reason for absolutely no reason so now i have to answer all these questions all over again I wasn't even done with them. And you wanna know what? I was literally answering a question to what is my favorite verse? What is this guy looking at? Oh my gosh, whatever. We're just gonna have to get right back into it. Oh my gosh. I was answering a question and the question was, what is your favorite verse? And I was answering it with Proverbs chapter three, verse five through six, lean not on your own understanding because you may not understand why things had to happen the way they happened. That was literally my answer. And then my camera shut off. Are you kidding me? Are you actually kidding me? Okay, it's getting dark, so I need to finish these. I need to do these questions. Oh my gosh. Dan S just wanted to say that I'm so proud of you. Stay true. Thank you so much. How was your first night in the car? I can't believe I have to read all these questions all over again. Oh my gosh. The first night in my car, I actually recorded it on my other vlog camera that is actually trash. Trash. I don't know if I recorded the night of or the morning of, but it wasn't the worst thing. It was very uncomfortable. I remember waking up super duper tired because I did not get a well rested night's sleep. Let me know if you guys want to see that. It's very gross. It's very cringy. I slept with my makeup on. Ew, I just thinking about it. I watched it for the first time maybe like a month and a half ago because I found it on one of my old SD cards. So I was like, hmm, I wonder what's on here. And then I looked and it was that. And I'm like, oh, so gross. I started sleeping with a pillow and then I realized it's just so uncomfortable sleeping with a pillow and I don't know why. So I ended up, look at that, sit down there. 
pretty so cute. So I ended up getting rid of the pillow and I stopped sleeping with the pillow for the remainder of our homeless journey. Let me tell you, it's affected me up until now to where I don't even sleep with the pillow anymore half the time. I mean, it wasn't the worst thing in the world, but I was definitely tired. Can I pay your bills? Absolutely. You know where to find my cash app. How is your mental health now? How being homeless accrued on your health? Um, if you ask anybody that was once homeless and how like their first few months were um, being housed, it's very difficult. And I know every story is different. I know everybody's experiences are different. Everybody's situation is different. It's been tough. And I think it's just because I, I'm alone with my thoughts and I'm by myself and I'm not going to work every day because fortunate enough to work from home, which we'll get into that too. I just think about everything that Dace and I had to go through. It's been super hard just trying to comprehend everything adjust everything process everything it's just surreal to know that this is my story and this is my testimony there's there's a reason why i haven't made a video of like how we've adjusted because i don't know do you work yes i work from home there's another question in here that i'm just going to answer it with this is does dace have separation anxiety so when dace was little he used to have separation anxiety he slowly got out of it after being homeless fortunate enough by the grace of god to have the opportunity to work from home i think there's many reasons that that opportunity was brought upon me just because days had separation anxiety and coming from being homeless living in our car being together 24 7 every single second of the day I think that would have been really hard for days for him to see me leave every single day to a nine to five I think that really would have triggered his separation anxiety I'm really glad that I'm be I'm able to work from home and I'm able to spend every single day with day still and he's super needy I don't think you guys understand you guys see in my videos he's very clingy he's always on me i've always got to be talking to him like he's just very needy i love him so much and i'm i'm super happy and i'm super thankful and grateful to still be able to spend every single day with him and wake up with him and whatnot so how is dace adjusting to his new home and space i think he loves it however i think he loved it more when we would wake up going to the park and staying at the park all day and you know he'd go to work with me at the clinic and we were always like going somewhere he's adjusting fine i think he really enjoys being in an apartment and being somewhere comfy to sleep instead of the back seat sleeping on his back with his legs up in the air but I, I do think he probably wishes you know he could be out at the park all day every day still how do you stay positive during hard times I know this is a very vague answer and a lot of people are not gonna believe it but I solely rely on Jesus um you hear those birds that's how I've kept my hope and my faith my positivity because I'm literally only living for Jesus I'm only living for Jesus. I'm only loving one another because of Jesus. I'm only forgiving people because of Jesus. I am only here because of Jesus. I only have eternity life because of Jesus. There's so many things that it's all just because of Jesus and because of this one man that died on the cross for us. Why? be sad i know that's super like cliche to say because like i get sad sometimes and in those times i'm like there's no reason to be sad like you're okay but how i stay positive is just knowing that god has a plan for me and he knows the desires of my heart and i just have to pray believe and receive and that is mark chapter 11 verse 20 through, through 24 i believe that's just how i stay positive like there's so much to like be grateful for like look at the sunset There's just like so much to be thankful for and there's so many reasons to stay positive and be positive. And so if I can just be a positive light in other people's life and inspire others, that just alone makes me happy. What do you think your purpose in life is? My purpose in life is literally to spread the gospel and make it known that Jesus died for your sins. He died for my sins and you can be forgiven and you can have eternal life too. You just have to turn away and rebuke the enemy. A lot of people are like, well, if God was real, why doesn't he like present himself in physical form? You guys. He did. Jesus was sent and then you nailed him to the cross. And then he came back to life. He did. He did come in physical form. So there's that. Ways to not be depressed when you're unable to get help. Guys, I'm telling you, if you're wanting advice other than the God and Jesus advice that I'm giving you, you're not asking the right person because the only way to get help peacefully is through Jesus. To have an understanding on why things happen in your life and just knowing that oh, it's you. It's all because of not just God's plan, but like I said, that the enemy is definitely well and active and it sounds like, you know, you're experiencing depression, which is definitely from the enemy, not of God. You can't have one without the other. And so because of God, there's the devil, there's the enemy. Um, I just really recommend you get into God's word and you pray and you rebuke the enemy in Jesus' name. And I know it's not going to happen overnight, but it can happen overnight because God is a miracle of possibilities. And with him, everything that seems impossible 
possible is in fact possible. So there's nothing to lose. There's only an immense amount of possibilities to gain with Jesus. So that is my advice. You don't have to take it, but that's my advice. How come we don't see you live on TikTok? Totally miss your videos. I'm glad somebody asked. There's just too many trolls that try to ban my TikTok account. And so that's why I don't go live on TikTok anymore. But I'm thinking about going live on YouTube. Yeah, a lot of people ask me like why I don't go live anymore. I miss going live. I love going live. I love you guys all so much and I love the community and the platform that I have. And you know, if it's God's will and I went live and I my account got banned, so be it. If that's what was going to happen, then that's what's going to happen. That's why I don't go live anymore. And I'm so sorry. <laughs> But I do love you guys and I miss you so much. How do you like living in Arizona? I'm obsessed with it and the sunset definitely make it worthwhile and I wish I would have moved here sooner. But that was impossible. So grateful. It was one of the best decisions I've ever made for Jason and I. I don't know if I'd ever want to live anywhere else. I do want to live in Florida or Hawaii at some point in my lifetime. But those are both super, super, super expensive places. So not anytime soon. But I'll definitely be staying in Arizona for as long as I can. As long as it's God's will. Who inspires you the most? If we're talking about like as far as YouTube goes, it's Alicia Marie. Marie, Remy Ashton or Remy Cruz, Tara Michelle. Go-to clothing brands. I don't have like go-to clothing brands. I do like H&M and I do like Forever 21, but overall I really like thrifting stores. You guys know I love my Carhartt shirts and my sweatshirts. I'm wearing it right now. And I love my Nike sweats. Other than that, I like thrift stores. Like every shirt that you see me probably wearing is from a thrift store. I can promise you that. Hair growth tips. Girl, I have no hair growth tips. I don't do anything with my hair. I don't do anything with my skincare. Like all I do is use Pravona purple shampoo in the shower. Once a week and that's it and i know i need to get my roots done i already have the product but i just need Paige um to like find time to call me so she can tell me how to use the product and how to apply it to my hair i get my i get my roots done literally like twice a year i know you guys are waiting for that video and i promise you it's coming how to care less about the hate okay super easy hate is literally the projection of other people and how they feel about themselves people are really gonna sit around all day scrolling through social media nitpicking finding ways to cancel people and hate on people and put people down and this that and the other and I'm, if you really cared about people and you really loved each other and loved everyone and wanted the best for everyone um, and were genuine, you wouldn't be taking the time out of your day to make Reddit pages, leave hateful comments on people's videos. And the way that I'm able to disregard the hate is because I know that Jesus would never say any of those things about me. I know my worth and I know what I deserve through Christ. And I'm sorry, but did any of these trolls die on the cross for anybody? Um, no. Did any of these trolls make a blind person see again? Mm, I don't think so. The way I'm able to deal with the hate is through Jesus because I know who Jesus says I am and Jesus is of love and the enemy is of hate and I rebuke the enemy so I'm rebuking the hate. None of what these people are saying about me is true so as long as you know your truth and you know your worth then you should be fine. I know it's easier said than done but like I think it also takes an, uh, um, an amount of love for yourself in order to know like what they're saying about me isn't true. I love who I am. I love who God has created me to be. That's what I also want people to see when they see me or they meet me or they talk to me or watch me like that they see Jesus in me. That's how I care less about hate and that's how you should too is know your word, know what you deserve, know your truth, love yourself and know what Jesus says about you because anything these trolls are saying is not what Jesus would say about you. I'm pleased that these people would rather sit around and make a whole hate page on me. I'm honored that I'm a hot topic in their life and that they spend all day trying to cancel me and hate on me and try to hurt my feelings but like oh that's right if you were to talk about yourself nobody would listen. I forgot, sorry. Anyways, but yeah, that's just like how I deal with it and that's how I believe you should deal with it too. It's so dark, I'm sorry. I tried getting out here sooner and I did. What Bible verse is most meaningful to you? Proverbs chapter three, verse five through six. And it's trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. For an example, we were homeless and I don't really know why. And maybe I will never know why, but that's why you don't lean on your own understanding because you never know what the true reasoning behind what you had to go through or what you've had to endure is. Do you see what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? Like if you're feeling a certain type of way, don't lean on your feelings because your feelings will misguide you. I promise. Did you ever feel pressure to tell your- Oh, did you? Um, I- Yeah, I did. I did feel pressure to tell my story and that's why I didn't tell it for the longest time because I didn't want to tell it until I was ready. And I feel really good about the time frame of when I shared my story because there was a weight on my shoulder that I was feeling. Like I was like, I need to tell the story. Are people really going to listen to a 20 minute video? And it was just like, it was super stressful because like I didn't know how much people actually cared. Yeah, I did have 
have pressure. I deserve some sense of privacy just because I'm a content creator and I'm a person with a platform on social media. That doesn't mean that everybody deserves to know every single thing about you. Yeah, I did at first, but I'm really happy at the time frame that I waited to tell my story because it all just made sense in the end. Just wanted to tell you that you are a beautiful person inside and out. Thank you. How did your homeless journey start? Please go watch my story time on my TikTok. It's in a playlist above my pinned videos. Biggest mental health challenge shifting to just no longer being in survival mode. By being completely honest with you, I still kind of feel like I'm in not survival mode, but instead of like fight or flight, I feel like I'm in flight and I don't know where I'm going. Like after being homeless and sleeping at people's houses and RVs and trailers, and oh, I've learned to adapt and live and sleep anywhere. And so that's why I feel like my apartment doesn't really feel like my apartment because I feel like it's just like another hotel. Do you miss being on the road? Just the travel aspect of it. I do. There's only two places in Oregon that I miss. If you're from Oregon, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And I really miss Cape Kiwanda at Pacific City. That was my favorite beach to go to. And Mary's Peak. I don't really know how to explain what Mary's Peak was like. It's at the very top of a mountain. You can see over a couple of the towns or the cities or whatever. And it's just a very quiet place that everyone goes to watch the sunset. Kind of like people do here at Pablo Park at the Hole in the Rock up there. Which is why I, I like coming here. I do miss the adventure part. But I don't miss living in the car and trying to make it through. Not having like a stable place to go to the bathroom and shower and cook and eat and sleep. Like it just sucked guys. It just sucked so much and I'm not gonna cry. Do you only do social media now? Yes, I do. I only do social media now. I've been wanting to, at least like with YouTube, I never, ever, ever thought that I would be anything on TikTok. When I first started my TikTok videos of like day 117, 118, I had no idea how to use TikTok. It was like a month prior, Kaylee, my best friend, she had showed me how to use the app Splice and I'm like, Oh my gosh, if I had known how to use this little video editing app sooner, I would have been documenting my life sooner, but I had no idea how people edited their videos and posted them on TikTok. And once I started using splicing, like people use CapCut and all these other things, I still had no idea how to edit in within TikTok. I still barely know how to. I still edit within splice. Yeah, I never thought I would have ever made it on TikTok or became something or somebody on TikTok. What's your next step, boy? I do not know. I don't even know what tomorrow holds. I have plans and I have a dream board and a vision board and stuff, but like none of it is going to happen if it's not within God's will. Was it hard moving states? What was most helpful during the situation? No, I feel like I'd been on the road for so long, sleeping in hotels, like I said, in RVs and my car and uh, other people's houses. It, I just feel like I'm just, I was traveling again. I feel like I'm just like living my life. I have no roots anywhere. I don't have anyone keeping me anywhere. So it was super easy for me to just pick up and leave. Anyways, I'm gonna end it here guys because I have to pee super bad and I'm starving and I know Dace has to go pee too. And this has been such a long video. Yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any more questions, I'll definitely be doing another Q&A eventually for like more content and for more questions that you want answered or like any questions that I wasn't able to get to tonight, please drop them in the comments or I'll do another Instagram questionnaire thing where you can ask your questions there. There were a lot of questions that I, I wasn't able to get to just because there's so many questions, which by the way, thank you guys so much for chiming in and asking all the questions that you wanted. I hope I answered some, but like I said, if I didn't drop them in the comments and I will get back to them in the next video. Cheers. We love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.